welcome back to my channel. Um, creating this video um, as a workflow helper for those of you who are um, looking for ways to optimize your workflow in Ableton Live using the MPC VST. Um, I've watched quite a few videos where people are actually bouncing um, audio out of the MPC VST and then re-importing it back in to the DAW just so that they can use it. Um, it. Doing it that way is fine, but that is really time consuming. And frankly, you, you really don't have to do it that way. Um, so I wanted to spend a couple of minutes just showing you how easy it is to set up the routing um, for the MPC VST inside of Ableton to help you optimize your workflow. Um, optimization me, me, to me means uh, finding quicker ways of doing quicker ways of doing tasks that otherwise would be really, really difficult. And that's what I want to do with this. So I'm going to go ahead and just start. Um, I have a MIDI track already and I already have the MPC VST brought over into it. Um, so it looks like this and I'm going to click up here. I'm going to open it up. So this is the MPC VST. Um, I've already uh, dragged over one of the um, kind of uh, stock sounds from their, um, their curated uh, sound library. Um, so it's populated all of my pads already and I'm using this kit. So if you go up to the pad channel mixer, you'll see that all of my uh, pads already assigned a sound. So from there, uh, all we have to do is worry about um, routing all of the, the sounds out to their own channels. And it's really, really super duper easy in Ableton Live. So what, all we're gonna do is create some audio, audio tr uh, channels. And we do that by on the Mac by doing a Command T. And I'm just gonna use three of them for right now. And the thing about routing in Ableton is that you have to give it an input and you have to give it an output. So my input is gonna be the MPC, which is tagged as kick right now. It'll make more sense. Let me just change the label on that so that it doesn't look wacky. Okay, so cool. So my input is coming from the MPS, the MPC, and then my output, I'm gonna make this one three and four. Um, on this track, I'm gonna make it the MPC for the input. And then on this one, I'm gonna make it five and six. And then on track number four, which I may not use, uh, but I'll go ahead and set it up anyway. Um, my input is the MPC and my output is track uh, channel seven and eight. Okay, now, all right. So the other thing that you have to do is you need to make sure the monitor is on because we want to be able to hear um, what's happening from the pads. Um, so we just need to turn them on. Turning auto on sometimes doesn't work for me. Um, so I like to just uh, make sure that everything is turned to in um, so I'll know for sure that it's actually being monitored. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna actually open up the MPC console. And here is where the fun happens. So say for instance, if you're an MPC Live user, you've built up all your uh, tracks and you're ready to like bring it into a DAW so that you can drop some vocals. That's super simple. You're just gonna hook up the device to the computer, uh, make sure you're in your DAW, open up the VST, uh, open up your project, and then go to this, um, again, set up the, um, bring in the MPC on one of the channels or as a MIDI instrument rather, and then you're gonna add the tra uh, audio tracks and then you're gonna do the routing out to the different channels. And we're gonna go back in here into the software and we're gonna to go to the pad mixer. 
the pad mixer is going to allow us to be able to assign the pads, the outputs. So for right now, my kick is going to be on one and two. And mind you, everybody does this a little bit different. Some people like to assign, not use one and two because one and two are the, it's like your primary mix out in the uh, MPC software, which is fine. But if you're not going to have anything else playing on that channel, um, it's fine to use it for something else. And I normally just use it for my kicks, really, to be honest. Um, so one and, two, one and two is my kick. And then three is going to be my snare. Three and four is snares. Five and six are going to be hats. And again, the way you do that, you just click on here select the output and then, you know, select the output. Um, let's see. Yeah. So those, those are the only thing I'm, I'm going to use. So I have all my hats and I normally have like an assortment of hats that are together. Um, so I have those output it. Okay. So we're going to close out of that and I'll just show you everything is on its own separate channel. Now the th cool thing about the Ableton is that it allows you to be able to group all this stuff because once you start building your building up your core uh, tracks in Ableton things can get a bit, bit messy so you can just highlight all of these and right click on it and just group them so now I have my um, now I can name these two uh, remember that number one is um, normally used as your uh, main output which is why a lot of people don't use it, but I'm being hard headed. So what? <laughs> it's just the way that I do stuff. So snare and let's see, um, this is my, these are my hats. And then, you know what this track, since I'm not using, I'm just going to delete it. Okay. So I have my kick, my snare and my hats. And again, all I did was group them. So now I can program them and then I can change my group name to, um, MPC drums. Oops. That is not what I wanted. Oh, why am I having issues with this? Okay, there we go. All right. So now I can roll those up when I don't want to really see them all or roll them out. Okay. So cool. So now I've got my, my drum group and I, I can actually save this as a template. If I long term, if I just don't want to have to do this ever again, just go and save it as a template as your primary template and be done with it and never have to ever do it again. Um, and then just worry about adding additional, um, audio tracks and then routing them out. If you need to add different parts from it and then just do it that way, that way when you open up the MPC and, or when you open up, uh, Ableton and you want to just be able to just start working and not ever have to worry about, um, messing around with the workflow, Boom, you've already got everything ready to go. Um, but for people who actually have a device that's, um, you know, a remote device that you can um, disconnect from the p computer and build up tracks in it and bring it back, it, that <laughs> doing it this way is like, seriously, an easy workflow fix. Because once you bring it back in, plug it back in, you're just assigning everything back out it's the same thing. It actually should automatically detect as long as you remember on your device, um, to go back into the pad channel mixer. Let's go back there. As long as you're, uh, coming into the pad channel mixer and, uh, defining the outputs for your, um, for your, for your, um, programs, boom, you're good. That's it. That's all you gotta do. So I'm hoping that this saves somebody some brain damage. I'm just trying to help. I'd really hate people seeing people do complicated stuff that's not really required. You can spend all day working on a track and then you get down to the uh, pieces where you needed to integrate it back into the mix. And then you're having to spend two hours bouncing stuff out and then bringing it back in and having to resync it up. That's just time consuming and crazy. That's crazy to me. Um, you can, um, spend more time being creative and, you know, actually getting your mixes sounding good versus fighting with your equipment, trying to get your equipment to, uh, play with your workflow. You want the workflow 
to be there first and then, you know, use your creative creativity to create the beads. But those are my two pennies. That's all I can say. Um, well, I'm hoping that this is helpful and please like and subscribe and comment. Um, I'm really happy to hear from you guys um, to see how you're doing things or if you're um, if there's other ways that you have been able to do this that that helps to optimize somebody's workflow because trust me we're all trying to do the same thing make make music and if I find an easy way to do something I'm definitely going to share it so hopefully again that helps everybody and thanks for watching.